easy math okay today is a sunday so i am going to release a video on functions okay in previous video on functions we discussed some examples on how to find the domain of functions okay today let's start a new topic called as range okay what is a range okay we learned that as representing functions in form of sets we learned what is range right range means all collection of outputs for the domain right okay the same goes in the form of graph too range of y is equal to f of x a function y is equal to f of x is a collection of all outputs modulus of f of x corresponding corresponding to each real numbers in the domain corresponding to each real numbers in the domain means it is a collection or set of outputs of all real numbers in the domain means if we take a function f of x if we substitute the value of x in the f of x we will get some value to the f of x we will get the value y right those that y value is called as range okay there are some rules to find domain similarly to domain which there are some rules to find the range they they are first to find the domain of y is equal to f of x we need we need to make sure the following concepts first one if domain is finite number of points domain belongs to finite number of points then range belongs to set of corresponding f of x values means for example if domain is some set of values like 1 3 4 means those exact values then range will be the exact values of if we substitute the values of x the exact values we will get in that place if domain belongs to real numbers or real numbers minus some finite points then express x in terms of y from this find y for x to be defined it is not printed correctly find y for x to be defined that is find the values of y for which x exists in another words we can tell that for example there will be some equation let's take a small example let's take an example of the sine of the sine curve let's take y is equal to sin x let it be the function now we should find the range of that how can we find we can write that like x is equal to sin inverse of y right then the range of that function will be range of the sin function the range of that function will be domain of the sin function right we should just imagine y in place of x then we should find the domain of that function for example y is equal to sin x what will be its range to find its range just substitute that value in the means change that like y is equal to sin x right it will be changed like x is equal to sin inverse y then what will be the domain of sin inverse y the domain of sin inverse y is as we all know it is minus 1 comma 1 the domain of sin inverse function so here the range will be minus 1 comma 1 whole interval between minus 1 comma 1 you should do that process if r domain belongs to r or r minus some finite points and if domain belongs to a finite interval means for example between 1 comma 2 like that then find the least and the greatest values for range using monotonicity monotonicity okay that is a concept we'll discuss about that we'll discuss about that in next videos if domain belongs to a finite interval then find the least and greatest values for range using monotonicity we should find the least and greatest values for range okay now let's see how to find range of rational functions okay we know rational functions right means the division of two functions let's see to find range of rational expressions okay what will be the range for 
range for y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c by px square plus qx plus r and y is equal to f of x is equal to ax square plus bx plus c by px square plus qx plus r right let a be q square minus 4 let there be a variable a which is q square minus 4 pr and let there be a variable b that is 4ar plus 4pc minus 2bq is equal to b square minus 4ac. Okay, here if you observe carefully, a is the discrimin discriminant of the function in the denominator, c is the discriminant of the function in the numerator. We can't represent b in the forms. Okay, now then we should find minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Okay, if you observe this formula carefully, what is this formula? This is the formula to find roots of a quadratic equation, right? Is it, we should show that as b is equal to y1 comma y2. Let y1 be less than y2 then that implies range belongs to y1 comma y2 if a is less than 0 and range belongs to r minus closed interval of y1 y2 if a is greater than 0. Okay now let's see some examples on these two topics. First find the range of function f of x is equal to x square plus 14x plus 9 by x square plus 2x plus 3 where x belongs to r. Okay, here a is equal to 4 minus 12 is equal to minus 8. Means here a is minus 8. Okay, if you observe carefully, a means q square minus 4 pr, right? q square, 4 square is 4, 2 square, 4 minus 4 into 1 into 3 means 12 means minus 8. B is 4a, 4a r plus 4 p c plus minus 2 b q, right? If you substitute those values, you will get 12 plus 36 minus 56, which is minus 8. Minus 8. And c is b square minus 4 a c. You will get 160. If you want, you can substitute the values. Minus p plus or minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Substitute all these values and then you will get the value of minus 1 plus or minus root 1 plus 80 by minus 2 which is minus 5. You will get the value of minus 5 comma 4. It will have two roots, right? It will have two values because here in middle it is plus or minus. You should take one function plus and another function. And here, as you can observe, a is less than 0 because a is a negative value. So, the range will be minus 5 comma 4. The range will be closed interval of minus 5 comma 4. Okay, now let's see an, another example. Okay, the another example is find the range for y is equal to x minus greatest integer of x by 1 minus greatest integer of x plus x. Okay, if you see this, you may think this is a big problem. We cannot solve this. This is very difficult. Okay, let's see the easy solution of this. Okay, now you can use the second property in rules of finding domain. That is, you should represent this in form of x. In form of variables x. Okay, why in form of variables x? Because here the domain is all real numbers. So we should use the second formula or the second form. Convert this to form of x or convert this to the value of x. We should find the formula to find x or equation to find x. Okay, here y is equal to x minus greatest integer of x by 1 plus x minus greatest integer of x. 
Okay, what will you remember if there is if there is a form of x minus greatest integer of x? Okay, there is a function called as fractional part function. We discussed about that, right? And we said that fractional part is x minus greatest integer of x. Means the remaining fractional part which comes by subtracting x and greatest integer of that. So it, we can write that like fractional part of x by 1 plus fractional part of x. Thus the domain is real numbers. Therefore, we should write this in form of x. y is equal to greatest integer of x plus 1 plus greatest integer of x. Now cross multiply. Then you will get y plus y into greatest integer of x is equal to greatest integer of x. Now we need it in terms of x, right? But we can't write this in terms of x. So we can also write that in terms of greatest fractional part of x. You should write that in terms of fractional part of x. If you send y into fractional part of x to the other side, it becomes y is equal to y minus fractional part of x. So fractional part of x will be y by 1 minus y. Here, what is the domain for fractional part of x? Fractional part means the fractional part we got by subtracting the greatest integer of x minus from x, right? So, we will have it in between 0 and 1. So, 0 less than or equal to y by 1 minus y because greatest fractional part of x is y by 1 minus y. 0 less than or equal to y by 1 minus y less than or equal to 1. Right? So, here if we solve that, we will get 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1. 1 by 2. Okay, why? Now send minus y, 1 minus y to the other side. It becomes 1 minus y into 0, which is 0. 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1 minus y. Now send y to this side. 0 less than or equal to y plus y, 2y. Less than or equal to 1 and then if you divide with 2, you will get the following. 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1 by 2. So the range will be 0, closed interval between 0 and 1 by 2. Okay, here this bracket indicates that, here the square bracket indicates that the 0 is also included. But here the closed bracket includes that 1 by 2 is not included. Okay, now let's see another concept. Homogeneous functions. What are homogeneous functions? A function is said to be homogeneous with respect to a set of variables when each of its terms A function is said to be homogeneous with respect to any set of variables when each of its terms is of the same degree with respect to those variables. Okay, what is this? A function is said to be homogeneous function with respect to any set of variables and each of its terms means each of its terms if you take for example x, y, z, w like that. Each of its terms is of the same degree with respect to those variables. We should take some variables like x, y, z, w or in this case let's take a, b, c or let's take a, b. Let's take a, b as two variables. a, b as two variables. Each of its terms is of the same degree with respect to those variables. Each of its terms means it will have some terms, right? Each of its terms will have the same degree with respect to those variables. Okay, let's take an example. 5x square plus 3y square minus x comma y is homogeneous in x and y. Here we take here the degree of 5x square 
is nothing but 2. The degree of 3y square is also 2 and the degree of xy is also 2. Means it is same with respect to those variables. It has the same degrees. So it is a homogeneous function. Symbolically we can write homogeneous function as f of tx comma ty means y is multiplied with some variable t x and y are multiplied with some variables y then we will get t power n into f of x f of x comma y then f of x comma y is a homogeneous function of degree n examples of homogeneous functions y f of x comma y here x comma y have two variables right it is a function with two variables is equal to x minus y cos x by y sin x plus x okay here this is not a homogeneous function okay now let's see f of x comma y is equal to x by y ln y by x plus y by x ln x by y here ln implies to natural logarithm means logarithm with base e and root x square minus y square plus x or x plus y cos y by x are homogeneous functions of degree 1. Okay, now let's see another topic. The next topic is implicit and explicit functions. Implicit and explicit functions. A function is defined by an equation not solved for the dependent variable is called implicit function means there is a function it is defined by an equation not solved for the dependent variables for example if we take x cube plus y cube is equal to 1 defines y as an implicit function it defines y as an implicit function For example, it cannot be solved in any other ways. So we will call that as implicit function. If y is expressed in terms of x alone, For example, the equation x cube plus y cube is equal to 1. Okay, this is not defined in any of the variables. Like it is not defined in terms of only x or in only terms of y. So it is a dependent function. And if y has been expressed in terms of x alone, then it is called explicit function. For example, x into root 1 plus y plus y into root 1 plus x is equal to 0. If you solve that, you will get y is equal to minus x by 1 plus x or y is equal to x, which is rejected. Here, y is represented in form of only x, right? So, it is an explicit function. y square is equal to x represents two separate branches that is y is equal to root x and y is equal to minus root x as shown in this figure. So it is an implicit function. So it is an implicit function. Okay guys, this is for today's video. If you like the video, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, ring that bell icon, did not press the bell icon, and video. If you have any doubts, comment and I will answer them in the next video. Okay, next video on functions, we will discuss about
about odd and even functions.